Hey guys, my name is Ryan and welcome to Overwatch Central. So in this video, we're going to do a bit of a game analysis on the Fish Sticks Invitational Final between Hubris and Not Enigma. This is something we kind of want to do a lot of, so let us know what you think, if you've got any criticisms or just general praise for something like this, and let us know if you'd like to see more. But we'll get straight into it, we've got a lot to cover, and joining me as always is Miska. So let's start off by talking about the individual games and rounds. First off is King's Row with Hubris on attack and not Enigma on defence. Hubris ended up winning this one thanks to overtime, finishing at 11.37, which in stopwatch mode is still a really long time and all not Enigma have to do is beat it within that time and they've won this round. So what prevented Hubris from making progress and pushing forwards in a much quicker time? The team fights in the middle parts of King's Row were very interesting and really could have gone both ways. Not Enigma seemed to be a bit more careful with their mercy a couple times, which really paid off. Just before the first fight in the mid parts of King's Row, Siegel has his ult ready and we know that something is about to go down. An offensive Reinhardt charge is followed up by Siegel's rocket barrage, which takes Reinhardt out and Siegel turns to the rest of the enemy team, but is taken out by D.Va. Here comes a rest from Mercy. This is followed up by a defensive Reinhardt ult from Mesrar, which turns three heroes in the attacking team, whilst the attacking Reinhardt and D.Va are both still dead. The two Lucius on Hubris are eliminated here, making it a 4 for 0 fight in Not Enigma's favor. This is exactly the type of Mercy ult I was talking about in our Friday video. You revive your team and by doing that also outnumber the enemy, which makes it an easy fight for you. Just a couple minutes later there's also a fight during which the attacking team's Mercy die before the defending teams. That means that the attackers can't rest and the same thing that happened in this fight happens again. So Not Enigma slowing Hubris down a lot here. So Hubris was stuck in that difficult spot in the middle of the map for quite some time but after a couple of hero switches they managed to push through Not Enigma and get the payload to the next checkpoint and eventually to the final one. What changed for Hubris to allow them to do this? Because up until then Not Enigma were just really comfortable, they were sat deep and they were just able to take these constant waves of Hubris. I think the difference was that Hubris didn't wait with initiating after going around the corner just before the payload. They rushed in and overwhelmed Mesrar on the Reinhardt who is taken out. Other players on the defending team were caught off guard and Hubris managed to keep rushing forwards whilst also having some here stay on the payload. Hubris actually managed to reach the checkpoint but it really was down to the last seconds here. This last fight around the mid part of the map was a lot quicker than the other ones and not Enigma were too spread out to respond quickly. I feel like Hubris are better at pushing quickly with both teams being a bit more spread out. They seem to be more comfortable with it, whilst Not Enigma don't really know how to respond here. Moving on to the second round, and now Enigma are attacking on King's Row. And they managed to capture the initial control point just as quickly as Hubris did. I mean, history kinda repeats itself here, as Not Enigma are pushing comfortably and then suddenly lose a big team fight. How did Hubris manage to get the advantage here? The defending team are outplayed here and Hubris managed to push up a fair bit and regain some strength. But unfortunately, Hubris' success in this game end here and Mesrar from Not Enigma get to shine. His Reinhardt is exceptional and Mesrar plays a big part in Not Enigma re-establishing control of this game. Enigma also manages to get a lot done as D.Va towards the latter part of this match. So as I said, Not Enigma managed to do it a lot quicker than Hubris did, so they win the first game and we move on to Game 2 Round 1 on watch point Gibraltar, with not Enigma defending and Hubris attacking. And Hubris look really strong on this map, but it's actually surprising that they don't manage to complete it. It's not often that you see a team do that well, but still not able to complete the final objective. What happened here? What was their downfall? At the start of this map, Hubris really managed to find the tempo they had in a couple fights on King's Row. Their map control is fantastic, and watch point Gibraltar clearly fits their playstyle better. They stay rather spread out when pushing, but are able to synergize and help each other out when needed. They start going a bit slower after the hangar, but just completely loses the momentum in the absolute last bit of the map, unfortunately. It ends up being a fairly close game in overtime, but Not Enigma are the better team here, and even though they didn't dominate this round, they got the job done. And the final round, with Not Enigma attacking this time, they seem to be off to a pretty slow start, but eventually pick up the pace and sort of the opposite of Hubris, they get better as the match goes on. And after the final checkpoint before the end of the map, they have 8 minutes and 30 seconds left on the clock to complete it. And it's just no doubt that Not Enigma performed better by keeping 
to that tempo. However, in the grand scheme of things, both teams played differently, they both played really well, but how would you sum up Not Enigma's and Hubris's play style, as well as this grand final as a whole? Hubris are a lot better at pushing in the more open areas, like I mentioned. They split up and end up being a lot more efficient than when they stick together, actually. They're alright in team fights, but Not Enigma clearly had the upper hand most of the time. Not Enigma's team fighting and positioning is just better the majority of the time, and I do also feel like Mesrar's Reinhardt is a very strong and stable core for the team to work with. Even though some of the games were rather one-sided, I thoroughly enjoyed watching the Fish Sticks invitation on the Grand Finals, and I'm really happy to see competitive Overwatch already being very present on Twitch. A good start for future Overwatch esports for sure. It was a great match, and it's very interesting to add that Hubris actually beat Not Enigma 2-0, in a game this weekend. So it's not all domination from Not Enigma, so there's gonna be some very interesting twists and turns as far as how the esports scene progresses. That's it for this video. We're planning to do the EU finals as well. We'll hopefully put that out soon. We really like doing this thing. We really like sort of going over our analysis. But let us know if you wanna see more. Like this video, dislike this video, give us a good idea of what you want to see. And until next time, take care and we will see you then.